I'm Joanna Simpson here at Quant Mines International in Vienna. And joining me now is Blanca Horvat, lecturer in financial mathematics at King's College London and also research fellow at the Alan Turing Institute. Thank you very much for joining me. Nice to meet you. And how is artificial intelligence and machine learning changing quantitative finance? I think many people are asking themselves this question right now. And uh, the more you think about it, the more it becomes daunting that it's, it might not be changing quantitative finances in, in its core that much. So um, with the availability of machine learning, with the computing power, with, with the data that we have at hand, um, the focus shifts a little bit from what we were doing in quantitative finance so far, designing models that are simple enough that we can understand them, parametric models with few parameters that are able to say something qualitative about the data, about the real world, predict something. And with the availability of these computing powers, this just shifts a tiny little bit into a direction where we can compute more at the same time, uh, use more data. And um, I see it more as a shift rather than uh, a complete change because we still need to design these models. We still need to understand and control these models. So the knowledge about quantitative finance that we had so far is not going to be irrelevant. It's going to change and it's going to flow into the design of these models that we use from now on. So what are the challenges of applying machine learning to volatility modeling? I think um, applying machine learning to volatility modeling is not that different from the challenges of volatility modeling by numerical methods, traditional numerical methods uh, per se. Um, I think the main challenge right now in machine learning is to be able to prove that the method works. And oftentimes this, this uh, mathematical ability that we, we had so far in many numerical methods is a challenge for machine learning. Many times one doesn't know. It's a black box. Why does it work? Uh, you put in something, something comes out. Uh, why is it working so well? And the challenge is really to tie these models to something that we understand or actually to prove that they're working and to be able to develop a method that we can trust if we want to use machine learning in volatility modeling in real life. So I think the main challenge is to, to develop some kind of framework where we're able to trust that the outcome of these models is something that we can trust. So what's next for your research? Well, we are trying to understand exactly these kind of things. So we're trying to understand how we can apply machine learning models in a trustable um, way. Um, so one of the things that we were thinking about and we will present today also at Quant Minds is um, how we can use machine learning for calibration and how we can ensure that this is a way that we can trust. And basically, we're only using machine learning in this specific context as a speed up, which already opens the door for many, many applications. Um, and other question and other challenge is if we want to slowly move away from traditional models and, and use uh, machine learning as a method of data generation, how do we understand whether this generating process is good or not? That's another challenge. But there's many, many uh, areas where we can use that. So traditionally, people used uh, machine learning for alpha generation. Um, then we move more into um, calibration, volatility modeling. Um, but in all of these questions, um, the question is about um, trustworthiness. And I think this is really the main issue that we, we have to understand, whether it's about execution, whether it's about pricing, whether it's about forecasting. The question is, how well do we know and how well do we trust um, the outcomes of these models? And that once we understand this, um, we can use them with a lot more faith. Yeah, that all sounds very interesting. Blanka Horvat, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much.